and to observe closely the unfolding events uh, in Egypt uh, before and during the revolution and uh, his commentary in international media and his writings and his contributions in uh, numerous forums are testimony to the depth of his analysis, his honesty and uh, his deep engagement and commitment <coughs> to the principles of, uh, of justice and freedom and human rights and uh, since then uh, he continued on this path and the political courage he has demonstrated and the personal sacrifices he has made uh, we were all very impressed with that and so what we are doing this evening is a small token of appreciation for all that for his scholarly contribution for his political courage and for the sacrifices him and his family has made uh, to the cause so uh, uh, please uh, let us all uh, welcome uh, Dr. Ahmad Shaheen and uh, I would like to invite at this moment Dr. Hisham Atal to present him with the IIIT Distinguished Scholar Award. Exactly what I tried to achieve. I wanted to trace the 
the roots and the origins of Islam in the uh, nationalist movement in three North African countries, Tunisia, Morocco, and Algeria, and also in the process of nation building and state building. So I combined, I tried to combine between the comparative politics, methodology and approaches, and of course the value or the indigenous values of the nation. My latest project was, of course, the Encyclopedia of Islam and Politics. I spent exactly more than six to nine months in libraries just examining Western encyclopedias of politics and general encyclopedias to understand the philosophy behind uh, categorizing, indexing, um, uh, coming up with the themes for encyclopedia in Western literature and so on. And I used this in a way that reflected, again, the particular uh, characteristics and feature of Islamic culture and Islamic politics when it comes to values, concepts, institutions, structures, personalities, and so on. Uh, the ethical and reformist project of Triple IT, of course, bore good fruits. Through Triple IT and its affiliated scholars, hundreds of innovative work came out, tens of active branches established throughout the world, and the School of Scholars and Intellectuals formed. It even branched into equally important uh, schools, what we now call the Madrasa Islam al Harari, to which I belong as well, and is very influential in Egypt, and also the Madrasa al Sadiyya, and they both have great impact in stretching from Morocco all the way to, to Indonesia. I am certain that the trend will still evolve and enrich Muslim intellectual life further by taking a new level that focuses on ethics and morality. And in this respect, this is not a coincidence, but it's really a remarkable that the scholars that spoke in the morning, it seems that there is some kind of consensus over the need for promoting an ethical approach to uh, Islamic issues and Islamic Sharia. Looking what, into what's happening in the, in the Muslim world around us, in Gaza, in the Arab, the Arab Spring, Islamophobia, ISIS and its sisters, Islamists and the challenge of governance and leadership, all these challenges require a serious reflection on where the Muslim world is headed in the near future and what's urgently needed. Uh, uh, my, 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 uh, it's about time that we shift the focus from the state, examining the state and looking at the state and politics to the human being, and from law to ethics in a mutually inclusive way. My main argument is that the human being and not the state should be the core of the Islamist political and intellectual activity, and that ethics should be the foundation of our balanced perspectives of the Sharia. We need to focus our intellectual efforts on producing an Islamic framework that is universal in appeal, humanistic in focus, inclusive in practice, and ethical in essence. What's needed is a creative framework that succeeds in projecting a new system of ethical and universal values that the, that the educated and activist Muslim can share with the rest of the community and that the Muslim community in turn can share with the rest of the world. Our classical atheists embrace clear universal values that can inspire our contemporary debate. They shared five main, and they were very clear cut, and very uh, sincere to these values. One, and the first, of course, is the dignity of and the value of the human being. The second one, cosmopolitanism and the unity of the third one, the attainment of happiness as a legitimate goal. The fourth one, the value of knowledge and reason. And finally, cooperation of humanity to achieve happiness. Until this school flourishes, Muslim societies need courageous moral voices that speak against aberration, distortion, and the base of the basic tenets of Islam by fellow Muslims. On the other hand, and against injustice, aggression and control of the hegemonic powers of the world. In closing, I wish to thank my mentors and colleagues, the late Muhammad Bilal Kishk, Walid Qaziha, James Piscatori, 
شيخ طه جابر العلواني، دكتور منى ابو الفضل، دكتور ناديه مصطفى، ودكتور سيف الدين عبد الفتاح. Of course I'm grateful to my wife for her, her relentless support and encouragement despite numerous unwise decisions. I'm also grateful to Triple I team for the generous recognition, Dr. Jamal Barsanji, Dr. Hisham Talib, and Dr. Abu Bakr Shalqidi. I wish you more success in the service of Islam, Muslim intellectual life, and humanity. Thank you very much. recipient of uh, our Distinguished Scholars uh, Award. We wish you well uh, with your uh, intellectual and public uh, career. And inshallah, this will be uh, another beginning for continued engagement with uh, with IT's in the intellectual project and our uh, engagement with our community here and our community worldwide. Thank you very much, Nick. And uh, I'd like at this juncture to uh, <coughs> move on immediately.